What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. Sitting across from me this week, man, every week, don't confuse him with Eduardo Mangerotti, Desra. Eddie M? He was here? What? He's dead. Oh, poor guy. So wait, how, why would you confuse me with someone who's dead? Because he's an amazing fencer. Really? You know, why... Why do I even do research? I, I really, I, I, I didn't know that. Wow. Eduardo Mangerotti is the number one all-time fencer of all time. Really? I, I mean, according to Google. That's all I had, man. I did a, did a quick Google search before this, and you seem terribly shocked. I, I know. Who do you think he is? Uh, I, I have no idea. Okay. And sitting across from me is Brian Paul. Jesus Christ. No, Brian Paul. Uh, this week and every week on why we love PlayStation VR, what we do all the time <laughs> is we dive back into the PlayStation VR back catalog and we pick a game here and there, we pull it out, we look at it, examine it, tell you if it's any good or not. Because we love PlayStation VR. We do. Hey. What PlayStation we VR do. game do so we, we love my keys away they were <laughs> this week? Very loud. Desra. <laughs> <laughs> this week we're talking about what Brian expects me to do, of course. I expect you to die. That's right. Hey. Uh, listen, Eduardo, uh, I Expect You to Die came out back on December 13th, yes. 2016. 16. I forgot what year we were in. I had to do some quick <laughs> math. Um, this was only about two months after PlayStation VR launched. Right. Now, it was... It came out for the Oculus and Vive first, though, right. right? Yeah. So, but December thirteenth, the yep. PlayStation VR in only in the United States. It took mm -hmm. another few months for uh, Shell Games to get it out to other yeah. territories, which is understandable. Yeah. Uh, it, apparently, it costs a lot of money to get a PEGI rating. Uh, ESRB is much cheaper and faster, apparently. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you don't get it in your territory, well, go talk to Peggy. Sorry, she's the HR lady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but. I think in our research, we discovered a few things about Shell Games. Yeah, so it's Shell Games is a developer that mostly do educational games. Um, that's kind of what they're known for. Some of the titles that kind of got my, my mind, Orion Trail, which is sort of a takeoff of Oregon Trail, oh. which is kind of cute. Space um, Adventure? Yeah, yeah, basically, you know, your settler is going through space. Right. Uh, Happy Atoms, which is kind of neat. It's an um, augmented reality app where basically you use an uh, iPad or whatever, and you actually have these model kits to build atoms and molecules and kind of shows you what you're building. This sounds horrible. And, uh, of course, uh, something I'm going to have to check out, Daniel Tiger's Stop and Go Potty. Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, Daniel Tiger? Yeah. <sighs> it's a game about going potty. So, you know, it, it, I am so glad I played this game before I read the stuff that um, Shell Games is known for because mm -hmm. I was like, I would have probably had some questions. But it turns out, um, oh, my God. Mm. Yeah, this this uh, this game and this developer is fantastic. So uh, Jesse Shell himself, he's been developing for VR. How long did you? Uh, no, I don't know how long he's been developing for VR. Since 1995. So he was developing PlayStation One <laughs> VR games. No, actually, one of his first jobs was working for Disney Quest, which people who went to Disneyland and Chicago in the 90s might remember this. Uh, Disney Quest was Disney's attempt to start to spread out and sort of franchise a Disney-type experience throughout the world. And it was basically this one, like, three-floored building full of a few classic arcade games, but then, like, Disney-esque uh, arcade games. Um, one of them was an Aladdin's kind of racer uh, carpet ride. Oh. That, that was a, a Jesse Shell game. Excellent. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Jesse Shell doesn't just make games. No. He's he's apparently super smart and very talented. Uh, he wrote a book called uh, The Art of Game Design, mm -hmm. uh, A Book of Lenses. Uh, it's like 50 bucks on Amazon, <laughs> and it's getting great reviews. Got, I mean, other people who make video games uh, swear by this thing. Mm -hmm. And But he's not just that. He's also uh, he's, he's I mean, obviously the CEO of Shell Games and a distinguished professor at Carnegie Mellon University. Jesse, what the hell are you doing <laughs> making video games? It seems like... He's doing really well. He's kind of slumming it. Yeah, show, show games. Like, it's funny. Like we've spent so much time. You know, basically the the VR games that we've covered are either, you know, Capcom like last week or Three Guys in the Garage. Yeah, there, there's not a lot. Like, they're either huge companies you already heard of or really indie. And Shell Games is this weird like, you know. It doesn't seem like they'd be a big developer, but there's actually uh, 100 employees. 
Uh, yeah. So it's it's a pretty big gaming company. Yeah, they these are like the it's like the new THQ, the new mid tier developers. Right. Although THQ is kind of a bad word, I shouldn't refer yeah. to them as that. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but, so I expect you to die. Yes. Uh, not an educational title. Um, not as such. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're trying to think, like, you know, learn ways to get out of really overly complicated death traps. Use telekinesis. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, good. If that's an option, yeah. yeah. So it's it's basically an escape the room kind of game mixed with, uh, say, Roger Moore era James Bond. And there you go. But there's a, End of review. I expect you to die is actually a, a James Bond reference. Yes. It's, it's a quote from Goldfinger. Mm-hmm. Um, Sean and, Connery. Goldfinger. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, but Goldfinger said it. No, I know. Yeah. Well, okay. just, just saying. You know, trying you expect to... me to talk? Just... No, Mister Bond. I expect you to die. Yeah. Very good stuff. Um, I'm not a huge James Bond fan. Oh, that's well, a shame. Wasn't that? Yeah, I know. I'm like all the good stuff. I don't like. Yeah. Like Lord of the Rings. Like I'm still trying to convince myself to like that. No, I, I like. Everyone least... just turns us off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, they turned us off eight hours ago. I apologize. Uh, no, that there. I'm not like. Oh, all Bond is awesome automatically. There's mm. good Bond. There's bad Bond. But uh, yeah, this definitely is, you know, I was trying to explain it to my wife and she's like, oh, so it's like Austin Powers was well, not that because I was saying it's, it's sort of a spoof kind of of the um, the, you know, Bond genre. It's not quite as goofy as Austin Powers, yeah. uh, but it's not quite as serious as, you know, Sean Connery or Daniel, certainly not Daniel Craig. Um, but yeah, I, I think Roger Moore is sort of where, where it lies. It's a little campy. Um, there's, there's some humor in there, but you're definitely, you know, you're in these uh, death defying rooms. So. And you called it an escape the room style puzzle game. Yeah. And it is. Uh, but it's funny because we spent a decent amount of time recently talking about another escape the room style puzzle game, Dying Reborn. And it's it's yeah. funny that like if you put these things side by side, you would not even put them in the same genre, but they but they are. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know what? I, <laughs> like, just saying that, I mean, yes, like, logically, I know you're right, mm-hmm. but I had such a deep, visceral reaction. Like, no, you can't say those in the same sentence. Yeah. It's, no. Uh, uh, this, uh, this game, unlike Dying Reborn, just oozes quality. Yes, I mean, absolutely. From the graphics to, to the, uh, which, I mean, let's, I think we'll take these one at a time, I guess. Yeah. Graphically, holy crap. Right, and maybe it's that like you don't move around the environment, so they were able to like really spend a lot of time focusing on like one room for each level, mm-hmm. and they could really like you know take time to render and not have to worry about frame rates too much because you're not traversing anywhere; you're right. sitting stationary in one spot. Yeah, and that actually gets to um, some of the things the developers were thinking about, and uh, there actually there was uh, so kind of going back to the, the Jason Shell show, uh, he was like. Okay, VR is going to be a thing now. You know, I've been working on it forever. It's going to be something that people have in their houses. And he kind of had to drag the rest of his team kicking and screaming into making VR games because they basically said the same thing everyone else did. We tried in the 90s. It sucked. It's not going to work. People get sick. Why are we bothering to do this? And he basically had to say, no, this is what we're going to do. Uh, so there was a, a demo they made in-house for, for another type of game. And it had full locomotion. Everyone got sick. And the team was like, yeah, we were right. This sucks. Um, but, I hate your team. But, 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 Seriously. But, but, but. Sorry. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad yeah. anymore. I was mad for a second. <laughs> Stop being stupid. I'm, I'm not mad anymore. Go ahead. <laughs> but what happened was they, they kind of brought it back and like, all right, well, what can we do? Well, if we're playing a game, you want to have powers. You want to do stuff. But if we're sitting still, you have to create some situation where you're kind of locked in place. And that's stupid. Superman never gets tied up. Oh, wait a second. Superheroes get tied up all the freaking time. Yeah. And that's where kind of the James Bond idea came, and, and here we are. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and it's it, it's pretty fantastic their, the way they overcame what they considered a problem. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, we're going to get sick with motion sickness. We've got to come up with some kind of solution to this. Yep. And, and so this game uses either the DualShock 4 or the move controls. Yes. And i got to say, it doesn't matter which one you use. The controls are fantastic. Yeah, the controls are really well thought out. Um, again, I'm going to bang the drum for the move controllers, oh, which yeah. is still so funny if you think about a year ago. I was the one crapping all over move controllers. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I still want to do a, a throwback to the old Gaming Without Parole shows, <laughs> and I want to do like a double episode of why we love PlayStation Move and not talk about VR. I want to be a PlayStation 3-centric episode. That, uh, that would be tough. That would be fantastic. <laughs> you would hurt me. But the uh, but so I said both control schemes are fantastic. Yeah, 
the moves blow blow dual shock out of the water because because mm-hmm. then suddenly for the first time in the game you have two hands like, yeah hey, look at me we have two hands and you just kind of point at things and go i want to pick up that and you click a button or you click the trigger i think mm-hmm. and then uh two of the face buttons will either pull it toward you or retract it back into the distance or even better let it just hang out in space it's amazing you can just yeah, yeah literally just anywhere you want Put things all around you, yeah. and, and and that brings me to one of the like you know we're talking about like the build quality of this thing. Yeah. This is one of the things they actually thought about when they were play testing. That sort of pegboard kind of idea was right off the bat because one of the things they realized when they were playing puzzle games is oh there's something I have to read crap I have to walk all the way over read that come back well no you can just pick it up and just hang out in space. Yeah. But what happened was when they first did it they would just sit there still in space and and playtesters was like oh did i break the game <laughs> so they actually added just a, a subtle little wobble to it nice while this and it's just like that's that's the kind of level of detail we're, we're talking about uh, when they built this yeah and just to just to add on to that mechanic mm-hmm. it's this game being able to do that allowed them to make kind of an intelligent game there are so many different little documents you find that, like, if you had to go search them out every time you needed them, you'd be in big trouble. Yeah. But, like, this game, I mean, there's, like, documents <laughs> telling you how to do things, like, diffuse bombs. Uh, there's a periodic table you need to reference. Yeah. I mean, it is get, it gets pretty damn complicated. That was the first thing I thought of. W- without giving away too many spoilers, because, yeah. you know, it's a puzzle-based game, so don't... Um... Yeah, and, and also, I don't know what I'm going to do for the footage, like, without just having oh, total yeah. spoilers. So, you if, know what? if it's a total mess back there... There, don't mind me. I have no idea what's going on. I, I, I get it. Because I forgot to mention this before we get started. Yeah. Just play the opening over and over again. Because this might be one of the best openings in VR. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a... And the theme song. Oh, my... It's maybe now, one of yeah. the best vi- video game theme songs ever, but certainly the best I've come across in my short time with the, the PSVR. Yeah. It is a Bond theme song. It's a... Uh, uh, yeah, phenomenal. You can you can actually download it for free off of SoundCloud, and it's the first time I'm going to say, absolutely do this. This is a, a brilliant piece of work. It's again, it's a Bond song with a little bit of humor, and uh, you know, kind of like by the end, she's like rattling off all the ways you can die. In a, uh, it's yeah. a Shell Games original. I expect you to die. It's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's brilliant. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's what we just just loop the opening over and over. <laughs> it will definitely be there. Probably already <laughs> went by, um, and now we're sitting in a car trying to figure out how to defuse a bomb. Yeah, I, when that when that started up, I immediately because I didn't actually know what to expect because I hadn't I hadn't played this and it kind of came out before I was playing PSVR, yeah. and uh, this the opening section started. I just big dumb grin on my face. I'm like, okay, whatever happens next, I'm gonna love this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, so when this game came out, there were there were four levels. Yes. So you you got to play it in its more complete form uh, just I, recently. Uh, literally the day before I got it. Yeah, just recently. Uh, in case you don't know this already, if you already own the game or if you're about to download it, it now comes with five levels. Yes. Uh, so make sure you check that update before you start it up because so you get the, the fifth brand new free DLC mm-hmm. uh, first class. Yes. That's what it's called. Uh, but maybe we should go through... These levels one by one to give people an idea of what kind of levels to expect. Okay. I mean, there's only five of them. It won't take us long. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So the first one, I think, is my favorite. Okay. You're sitting in a car in an airplane, <laughs> and you need to get out. Yeah. And it can't be your car because it's trying right. to kill you. And then now, yeah, you don't need to get out of the car. You're stealing the car from the evil mad scientist, yep. and you need to drive it off of the plane, which is flying, so... Kudos yeah. to that. Yeah, it comes with a parachute. It's all right. <laughs> uh, and that, that was that. This is my favorite one by far. Okay. Um, the the rest of the levels are well designed mm-hmm. and very atmospheric. Yep. But this one, I think everyone has sat in a car in their life, and so immediately you're like, yeah, this is. I totally understand where this game's coming from right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, and then the next one. What's the next one? Uh, the next one is squeaky clean. Oh yes, uh, the window window washing. Yes. Yeah. This is where this is where stuff gets starts to get real complicated, real mm-hmm. fast. This is where the periodic table is. This yeah. is where you start looking at diagrams, trying to figure out. You're like literally like mixing chemicals, trying to figure out what to do. And at one point, which and I don't think this is a spoiler, your your cover is as a window washer. And at one point, a guard's walking through, and you have to pretend to <laughs> to wash a window. Now, I, I will say, when I played it, I had accidentally broken the window yeah. that I was supposed to be washing. And I just mimed washing the blank window, and the guard fell for it, which was great. Uh, which kind of brings me to the point before we yeah, go no, on that. Yeah, no, fantastic. Um, when they were developing this, one of their rules was 
and this is actually now I need to go replay this. Mm -hmm. Every puzzle should have at least three solutions. Now let me let me ask you this yeah. because because recently, and I'm I'm literally asking you this. This is not a this is not a canned uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. Uh, recently, Justin Parada and I were talking in the comments section of one of the videos. Hey. What's up, yeah. Justin? And, uh, and, and, and I mentioned that all of the levels have multiple solutions. Yeah. Is that true? That's, yeah, that's what, that's what the developer claims. Because so. I can't seem to find, uh, I was just basically scouring YouTube at this point, like mm -hmm. looking for different puzzle solutions, and I couldn't really find different solutions to each level. What I found was many different things you could do within the level to help you get to the final solution, but but really, what you're doing is still the same. Yeah, I think that that's probably a, a semantic question, but it's like, yeah, should I use you know the screwdriver to do this, or should I use this other thing to do this? I think those are what we're talking about with different solutions. Like, yeah. it's not like some games where you know, Dying Reborn, uh, where you have to find this one thing and to do this one thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you break glass. You can use it. You can use the glass like you do to cut things, or you can use the knife that was in the room to cut things. Yeah. Um, you know, the, when they. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. So basically, what yeah. I'm saying is, I, yeah. I apologize to Justin and anyone else I misled, uh, because th there are many different ways to go about doing things in the game. Puzzle solution, pretty, pretty much the same, no matter how you go about it. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I, th I think in general. Yeah. Uh, next up, the submarine deep dive, <laughs> deep. My least favorite one, I have to be honest. Really? Okay. Yep. Uh, only because it's because it's such a cramped location, mm -hmm. it seems like there's less to do, less to find, less to discover. There's a bunch of things you can open up and things to find once oh. you do. But but for me, I was like, man, I am stuck in this tiny little vessel <laughs> and there's very little I can do here. I think it's I think it's interesting because it was actually one of my favorite. It wasn't my number one favorite, but it was one of my favorites because it's the only one where there's time pressure, really. Yes. It's like I think that's another know. reason I didn't like it okay. so much. Yeah, the other games you can kind of take your time, but um, well, there there were different moments in this where you need to be like, oh crap, you know, water's pouring in. I have to do something about that now. Yeah. And then there's something else that happens a little later. So, uh, and one thing that you know I, I will say for all these games. Death is sudden and unpredictable, and yeah. underlines sudden because you're going along. Also, oh, I just died. <laughs> but also yeah. keep in mind that like dying is just part of this game. Absolutely, it's yes. all about trial and error. It's all mm -hmm. about being like, okay, I died because this laser just shot me. What can I do about the laser? Yeah, you know, and until so you go and you probably die a few more times from the laser until you go, oh, I can do this. Yeah, and then you restart. You do that, and then you die again from something else, and then you mm -hmm. reconstruct the entire situation from start to finish. So okay, uh, then then uh, was next the um, winter break. The winter break, lodge. yes, the hunting lodge. Yeah, pretty cool. I, I kind of like this one too. Yeah, yeah, these are these are sort of my my one one in my, not the underwater one and the lodge are my my tied for number two. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's only five. I know. You can't I know. tie number two. I know. I liked it a lot. All right, you can so tie I, number I don't, two. I, I, yeah. Um, so basically, you are you end up in the evil villain Doctor Z's um, <laughs> hunting, hunting lodge. lodge. Yeah. <laughs> so you're at his desk, and yep. you know you can like grab his hat, put that on. Um, there there are some fun trophies in this game too, by the yeah. way. Uh, lots of like hidden secrets, lots of random things to do. Mm -hmm. If you find a cigar and a lighter, you should probably smoke it. Yeah. Find some champagne, pour it, drink it. Do your thing, man. Like explore, experiment, especially when there's no time constraints. Make the most of this game. Yeah, um, they really put a lot of thought into the object interactions. And as I said earlier, you know, uh, if you break a piece of glass, it's not just okay. Well, your shattered glass just becomes part of the environment. I mean, you can actually pick it up and use it as you would a piece of glass. Yeah, things aren't just you know, oh, you use it to solve this one puzzle this one way, and that's it. No, that it, it's as much as they can be. You're in a real room with real objects. Um. Yeah, <laughs> and then finally, finally. The, the most recent piece of I mean, it's the only DLC we've gotten, and what what totally shocked me mm -hmm. was that it's the only patch this game's gotten. I checked today, and it was like, uh, oh really? Okay. It was like download or download notes or patch notes or whatever it is you can do on the PlayStation Four home screen, and it was like patch one point oh one. Yeah. Here's your DLC and a couple bug See, fixes. This like, is what I'm talking about, developers. Okay, mm -hmm. these guys. Sure, we kind of gave them a little crap about you know Daniel Tiger and all that, but they've been putting out games and they're putting out you know what complete. This games. game is finished. Yeah, we play tested it to to death. This is ready to go. And then when the complaint came across their their table that said, "Hey, uh, for for what you're charging, mm -hmm. we feel like it's a little light on content." They're like, "Okay, 
Yeah. Well, yeah, no problem. They were very transparent about saying that the biggest complaint that they got was that there weren't enough levels. And they are, all right, we'll get, here's, here, we're going to work out yeah. another level for you. And not only that, there's a new level. It's not just like, oh, a quickie tacked on. I think it's, well, it's certainly longer and definitely more involved than oh, any longer. other previous levels. Yep. I, I hesitate to call it a full sequel, but I mean, it's so much more involved. There's actually, you know, non player characters. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, uh, uh, they're involved and it's yeah it took quite a while it's funny I played this before I realized it was an add-on in DLC and it's like wow this is just so totally different from the other ones that came through uh, what were they holding back Those, you know, yeah well that's why yeah it's, so the final one is uh, is called First Class yeah. and you're basically sitting on a train that's traveling through India I believe India yeah, yeah and uh, man it really is it's, it, it feels it, it feels different and I think the reason it feels different mm. was because they worked so long and so hard to perfect these first four levels that after that, I think they all took a, like a big sigh of relief and went, all right, what else can we do? Yeah. And it was like, literally, this could have been the first level in, like you said, a sequel. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. uh, so it was awesome that they gave that to us for free. Uh, and, and I think most people who bought this game probably bought it when it first launched. Uh, so that so when you pay full price for something, you know you you definitely want to get your money's worth. Mm-hmm. So it's awesome to be able to go back to something like this and and really feel like uh, that that you did get your money's worth. Yeah, I I just thought it was really interesting as they were doing the play testing for this. Um, and again, I, I cannot emphasize enough play testing is such a huge part of their development cycle for all their games. And actually, if you're in the um, uh, Pittsburgh area, if you live near there, if you go to the Shell Games website. They actually have a thing down at the bottom. They are desperately looking for playtesters. So if you want to get on their list, um, and especially if you have a family, because they do a, do a lot of educational games, they look for local playtesters and just say, hey, can you come in for an afternoon and play these games? Awesome. Yeah, so this is, I mean, definitely if you're anywhere near the uh, the Pittsburgh area, go check that out. But here are, the, here are the questions, and this tells you what kind of like professionals they are. Anytime the playtesters went through, after they were done, they said, one, what was your favorite moment or interaction? What was your least favorite moment of interaction? Okay. What did you, uh, what did you, f- what made, uh, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. which is going to be ironic for the question I'm trying to ask. When did you feel the most clever? Was there anything you wanted to do that the game wouldn't let you do? Ah, I like that. Yeah. And finally, if you had a magic wand that could change any aspect of the game or your experience, what would it be? So I think that fourth question is super important. Mm-hmm. It's like, is there anything the game, you know, because we, we're, hey, we're gamers. We hate invisible walls. We hate like, God, I there's a pen on the desk. I should be able to pick up that pen and use it to do that. But, you know, the developers decided that's just going to be part of the background. Um, they, they did that. They went through. They watched the play um uh, playing the games and realized, hey, he was trying to pick up the gun to do something there. Um, so, yeah. You, I, I, more than anything, yes, this is a great game. Yes, definitely, uh, you know, everything's wonderful about it. But I think it's really gives us a chance to talk about how important it is to just do the work. Yeah. Dying Reborn is a perfect example of that. Well, I don't think anyone play tested that thing. When you talk about putting in the work, and you talk about um, and play testing, when you talk about it's a level of polish, right? Yes. And I think something that Dying Reborn totally missed that that really could have helped the experience quite a bit was was they just needed to hire somebody. Uh, voice acting because there mm-hmm. wasn't much voice acting in uh, dying reborn all they really needed was like oh two voice actors anthony daniels right yeah amazing is is in uh, i expect you to die this Sorry. is it just it totally it's one more element that it, that makes this game eclipse pretty much everything else yeah. out there that really just like gives it that mark of quality mm-hmm. uh the the writing the voice acting it just so and i think we didn't even talk about how between levels or, or the tutorial part oh, of this yeah. game, you sit in your office and, and the way the way that it's all information is presented to you mm-hmm. in the in the in what they force you to do through tutorials to like learn the controls yep. is just fun, man. It's like like, hey, see that target over there? Pick it up and like go put it above that plant. Hey, pick up another target and go put it over there. And then they're like, they're like now grab a gun and shoot those targets. Yeah, <laughs> sweet. I get to shoot a gun in the tutorial. Usually it takes forever for you to do anything fun in any game. Mm-hmm. And they were like, Okay, now you can shoot. Yep. Like, sweet. And you can blow stuff up. You can light books on fire. You get little trinkets and stuff as you complete levels and then so you end up back in your office and you see like little collectibles that you can shoot and destroy and pick mm-hmm. up and do whatever you want to while you're sitting in your office it's like these little things that they didn't have to add that just adds so much to yeah your your feeling of satisfaction for completing a level uh but even more than that makes even the quote-unquote boring parts of this game a lot of fun 
And I just hit the mic. I, I mean, surprise. <laughs> you, and, you and Michelle, you're both fired. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, and actually, you know, I, and on top of this all, so once you beat the game and you go back through, um, here's, here's, here's something I tend to avoid on most games because it gets really over-involved and all that, but uh, the commentary. Yeah. There's actually commentary on this, and it's so well done. Like, I, I love Portal and Portal 2. Once I, I beat Portal 2, you can unlock and do the commentary stuff. I hate doing the commentary in Portal 2 because as much as I'd love to hear about what the... Just, you click on it and it's just... It's literally like 10 minutes long yeah, or blah, yeah. blah, blah. This, it's short and sweet. Like, there's a little click. Hey, this is how we did this. Or here's a funny story about that. 30 seconds, boom. Yeah. And it's... it's. I mean, again, just another little level of, uh, of detail and quality. And it makes, it makes replaying the game... Mm-hmm. more fun i mean there's already a reason to go back through the see the problem is i think oh. a lot of people will sorry. sorry did you look in the back seat in the car yeah oh i didn't oh. I, was, I was just reading uh reading this article by by, by jesse shell he's like yeah people don't turn around in vr so he put stuff behind him yeah. it's like oh wait and so there's something in the back seat crap i never even looked but anyways so Yay. basically what we're saying is that you know there's, there's a lot of people i think the people that have problems with this game will complain about the length of it Okay. Right, because if you're good from the get go, if you just if you are really good at puzzle solving and, and you're quick on your toes, mm-hmm. quick on your feet, uh, then you could probably you can blast through each of these levels in like three minutes. I mean, a lot faster actually if like you want to speed run it. But like figuring yeah. the, figuring out the puzzles and taking your time and like in like doing it all and figuring out what it all is mm-hmm. is the fun part. So like it's not a it's not a terribly long game, but going yeah. back through with the commentary. Going back through and getting all those extra awards, you know, for smoking the cigars and doing everything you possibly can in the level in one playthrough. Mm-hmm. It's just so much fun. It really adds to the replayability. When also figuring out the different ways to solve the puzzles, you know, and, and, and figure. Because the, the closest I can come, you know, I've been a huge fan of static. I've, I've, I've waved that, you know, that flag high since I started on this channel. Yeah. Um, these puzzles are nowhere near as difficult as static. I mean, completely yeah. different type of puzzle. Yeah, and if if you're going into this gym, like, yeah, I want this crazy brain busting, you know, it's not that. No. Uh, the, the the puzzles are, I, I hesitate to say simple, but pretty pretty simple and easy to figure out. But they're fun. Yeah, the answers are there. Yeah, they're, they're there somewhere for sure. Right. At no point, like I I again, I love static, but there's been moments of, I have no idea what to do next. Like you know, your brain's fried. And I'm just, you know, banging my head against a wall trying to figure out what's... I've never had that situation with, with um, I Expect You to Die. It's just fun. Top to bottom, it's a fun puzzle game. It's currently twenty four ninety nine on the PlayStation Store. Yeah. Uh, recently, you picked it up on the one-year anniversary sale. I did. Uh, yeah. Much cheaper. Yeah. Uh, it was like 10 bucks or something crazy cheap. Right. Yeah. Uh, so let's, uh, let, let's, let's rate this sucker. Yeah. So for twenty four ninety nine for the price it's currently at on the store mm-hmm. with now five levels instead of four. Yeah. Uh, so just a recap of our, our rating scale. Number one, oh my god, drop everything. You need to buy this. If you have a PSVR, you have to have this in your library. Uh, two, meh, it's okay. You know what? If it comes on sale or if you've got some extra money burning in your pocket, sure, pick it up. Why not? And three is no. Do not reward these people. Do not let friends... Uh, friends don't let friends buy crap is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I, you know what? Even at full price, I mean, I bought it on sale. Uh, even at full price, I would have absolutely been happy to pay full price for this. Yeah, at at, uh, at full price, it, at full price at launch, it felt a little anorexic. It felt okay. felt a little lacking. Uh, but it was at launch. It was something we didn't, we didn't have anything. Yeah. anything like for for the system and even still still don't really have anything like it so i'm gonna say for 25 bucks five stages mm-hmm. i mean it's it's a push it's a real push but i'm gonna say it's a one like i'm, I'm so close to saying it's a two so it's like a 1.2 well <laughs> will this push it there's more common I mean, that's what they yeah. say, right? Yeah. Um, they, they, in the article I read with Jason, uh, Jesse, I keep saying J- Jason, with J- Jesse Shell, um, you know, this is, they intend to have more levels coming just kind of like clockwork. So, yeah. I mean, uh, and, I, and I'm wondering if it's all going to be free. I'm wondering if, mm-hmm. I'm wondering at what point do they say, hey, you know what? We've got all these levels in development. We're going to make the sequel. I expect yeah. you to die as well. Uh, so we'll see though, because I, I can't, I can't, 
it's awesome that they've they're promising things. We're still waiting for the DLC for Mortal Blit. So I mean, you know, let's uh, let's <laughs> let's take, company, let's take it company. as it comes. This is this is very true. Yeah, very true. I, I again, I have to go back to their their professionalism. Honestly, this they are putting out a game. It is finished. It is done. They say we're going to do X, and they have done X. Yeah. You know, they say, hey, we you guys don't like the there's too few levels. We're going to have more coming out. And they did. And so, uh, yeah. You know, this game is great. More importantly, this developer, I wish more developers would be like them. It's a one. Be like Jesse. We expect you to buy. Even save it up for this whole episode. I'm pretty much. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's why you wanted to do this game, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm not even a fan. I just I just didn't write that down like three months ago. I was like, I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. All right, that's it. Uh, so make sure you let us know in the comments what other games you want us to talk about. Uh, but for now, I'm Brian Paul. I'm Desra. And we'll see you next week.